In 1835, fighting broke out between Mexico and Texas, which was a part of Mexico at the time, in a conflict now known as the Texas Revolution. But why did it even start? Hey, why historians, welcome back to the Why in History. I'm your host, Alexander. Up until 1821, Texas had been a part of the Spanish colony of New Spain, but after New Spain declared its independence and became Mexico, Texas now found itself under Mexican sovereignty. At this point, nobody really lived in Texas, which meant that it didn't have enough people to be made its own Mexican state. Parts of what is now Texas were grouped with several states, with the largest chunk of it forming part of the Mexican state of Coahuila y Texas. Even though people within Mexico really didn't want to move to Texas, Americans did, but Mexico was having none of it. Mexico banned Americans from moving into Texas, but after realizing Texas needed people, Mexico relented. In 1824, the empresario system was set up. Basically, the Mexican government would give an empresario, or entrepreneur, a giant piece of land, but on one condition. They had to bring with them other settlers to populate it. This made the population of Texas skyrocket, going from less than 5,000 people to about 35,000 people in only 10 years. But almost all of these new people came from the US, not Mexico. However, this also had its drawbacks. American settlers were bringing with them the American way of life, namely slavery, so when Mexico banned slavery in 1829, the American settlers in Texas didn't listen. To fix this problem, Mexico wrote up the laws of April 6, 1830, which, among other things, outlawed any more immigration from the United States. But once again, Americans didn't listen. For a while, that was how it was. Mexico told Texas to do something, and Texas didn't do it. However, in 1833, Mexico finally tried to change this. They gave Texas more seats in the state legislatures and let them keep their slaves, which seemed to resolve most of Texas's grievances. Enter Antonio de Padua Maria Severino López de Santa Ana y Pérez de Lebrón, or Antonio López de Santa Ana for short. He overthrew the government and got rid of the constitution and the state legislatures. To say the outrage in Texas was immense is an understatement, and Santa Ana knew this. He sent a small contingent of his army to keep tabs, but that only made things worse as the Texans did not like having the army on their doorstep. Texas wasn't the only place where Santana's coup caused problems. Civil unrest broke out all over the country, which a few Texans used as strange justification to not pay customs duties, prompting Mexico to send even more troops. Back in 1831, Mexico had given the settlers of the small Texas town of Gonzales a cannon so they could defend themselves from Native American raids. In September 1835, a Mexican soldier stationed there killed a resident, further aggravating the Texans. Because of the growing tension, Mexico felt it would be unwise to leave the cannon with the settlers and try to take it, which failed. However, this caused even more paranoia amongst the people of the town. This all came to a head when the commander of Santana's army in Texas, Domingo de Ugarte Chea, sent about 100 troops to try to take the cannon again, but specifically told them not to take it by force. Unfortunately for Mexico, the town found out about the plan to take the cannon, and to make it even worse, the settlers did not plan on giving it up. Long story short, the militia the town had put together snuck up on the Mexican camp, and the Battle of Gonzales broke out. While Mexican troops were trying to avoid a fight, Texans were actively looking for one, creating a really interesting situation. Eventually, the Mexicans left without the cannon, and in the aftermath of the battle, the settlers raised the famous come and take it flag. The rift between Texans and the Mexican government was too deep to fix now and the Battle of Gonzales provided the Texans with an important boost, one that made them think they would be able to kick the Mexican army out of Texas for good. The Texas Revolution had begun. If you liked my video, don't forget to like it and remember to subscribe to my channel so you can see more awesome videos like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.